today I'm going to be reviewing The Dark Knight Rises, directed by Christopher Nolan and starting a large cast including Christian Bell, Michael Caine, Gary Oldman, Anne Hathaway, Tom Hardy, Marion Cotillard, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and Morgan Freeman. And this is the final, the final addition to The Dark Knight trilogy, all directed by Christopher Nolan that started back in 2005 and, the, and then all the way to the film's release date in July 16th. 2012 now i'll be going through the pl entire plot of the movie but if you want to skip that recap of the entire plot go ahead and click on your screen right now and it will take you straight to my review of the movie so without further ado let's go through the plot of the dark knight rises it has been eight years since harvey dent's death in the dark knight and a new act called the dent act grants the gotham police department powers to nearly destroy the entire organizations of crime Feeling guilty for covering up dense crimes, police commissioner James Gordon, played by Gary Oldman, decides to resign, confessing the truth, but decides not to do it in the end. Batman has disappeared after eight years, and Bruce Wayne, played by Christian Bell, has shut himself away from the entire world, feeling worthless and walking around with a cane. Cat burglar Selina Kyle, played by Anne Hathaway, obtains Bruce fingerprints from his home and kidnaps a congressman. She then disappears. Selina hands the fingerprints to Philip Striver, played by Byrne Gorman, an assistant to Bruce's business rival John Thaggett, in hope of having her criminal record erased. Striver then double crosses Selina, but she uses the congressman's stolen phone to alert the police to their location. Gordon and the police arrived to find the congressman and then pursue Striver's men into the sewers where Selina has fled. A masked militant named Bane, played by Tom Hardy, captures Gordon. Gordon escapes and is found by John Blake, played by Joseph Gordon-Levitt. A once orphaned patrol officer, Gordon promotes Blake to detective with Blake reporting directly to him. Wayne Enterprise is unprofitable after Bruce discontinued his fusion reactor project when he learned that the core could be weaponized. Later, Bane attacks the Gotham Stock Exchange using fingerprints from Bruce Wayne. Alfred Pennyworth, played by Michael Caine, concerned that Bruce cannot move on from, what, from being Batman, reveals to him that Rachel Doss had intended to marry Harvey Dent before she died. Alfred then resigns in an attempt to make Bruce wake up. Fearing that Daggett Bane's employer would gain access to the reactor, Bruce Wayne asks Wayne Enterprise board member Miranda Tate, played by Marion Cotillard, to take over his company. After being promised the software to erase her criminal record, Selene agrees to take Batman to Bane, but instead leads him to Bane's trap. Bane reveals that he intends to fulfill Ra's al Ghul's vision to destroy Gotham with the League of Shadows. He exchanges Batman and delivers a crippling blow to his back before taking him to, for to a foreign, well-like prison where escape is virtually impossible. The inmates then tell Bruce the story of Ra's al Ghul's child, born in a prison and cared for by a, pri by a fellow prisoner before escaping, the only prisoner to have ever done so. Bruce assumes the child is Bane, however, that might not be the case. Meanwhile, at Gotham, Bane lures the police underground and collapses the exit within them. He kills Mayor Garcia and forces an abducted physicist to convert the reactor into a nuclear bomb. Bane uses the bomb to hold the city hostage and to isolate Gotham from the rest of the world. Bane reveals a cover-up of Harvey Dent's crimes and releases prisoners and initiating a revolution. After months of recovery from his injury and retraining himself, Bruce escapes from the prison to enlist Selina, Blake, Tate, Gordon, and Lucius Fox to help stop the bomb from detonating. So you came back to die with your city. No. I came back to stop you. While the police and Bane's forces clash, Batman defeats Bane, but Tate intervenes and stabs Batman, revealing herself to be Talia al Ghul, Raish's daughter. Talia then escapes from the prison, aided by her fellow prisoner and protector Bane. She plans to complete the mission of her father by detonating the bomb to destroy all of Gotham, but Gordon blocks her signal, preventing remote det detonation. Talia then leaves to find the bomb while Bane prepares to kill Batman. However, out of nowhere, Selina and Kyle presumably kills Bane using the Batpod. Talia's truck crashes, but she remotely destroys the reactor before dying. With no way to stop the detonation, Batman uses the Bat 
to haul the bomb over the bay where it detonates. In the aftermath, Batman is presumed to be dead and is honored as a hero. With Bruce also presumed dead, Wayne Manor is left to the city and to become an orphanage where Wayne's remaining estate is left to Alfred. Fox discovers that Bruce had fixed the Bat's autopilot and Gordon finds that the Bat signal has been refurbished. While visiting Florence, Alfred witnesses Bruce and Selina together. Blake resigns from the police force and inherits the Batcave. So that is The Dark Knight Rises, directed by Christopher Nolan and starting this large cast like I said. I thought it was a great movie. When I first watched it in the theater, I was amazed by how how bigger Christopher Nolan made this movie. And comparing to the other two movies, this definitely had a big feel to it, especially with the battle sequences, with the uh, fight sequences between Bane and Batman. I thought they were pretty, they were done pretty well. You definitely felt uh, Bane's physicality in a lot of fights, especially with Tom Hardy. You will only see his eyes, and that's something that Tom Hardy had to had to do well, especially without you know being able to use his mouth and his nose he had to really do a lot of his acting with his eyebrows and his eyes which is very tough especially when you're trying to do a fight sequences and trying to talk down to your opponent uh especially one as intimidating as batman as for batman uh christian bell came back into the role many people were wanting this to be a batman movie especially after the dark knight where although the movie was great it wasn't really about batman it didn't center around the character of batman as much as the previous movie as batman begins and so this movie felt like a revisit of the batman character into his eventual fall and his rise which we saw at the end of the movie and his story coming back from the bottom i i think it's a great story to tell although i do think that it could have been done a little better um having him isolated in a prison probably wasn't the best way to do it i did like the concept however of climb making the climb and climbing back to the top and to come from the bottom and go all the way up and to feel your freedom given back to you as for the rest of the cast i think that everyone definitely brought their a game uh, when you think about it, this cast was very, very full from the top to the bottom. You had Gary Oldman, Anne Hathaway, Tom Hardy, Marion Cotard, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Morgan Freeman. You had people return like Cillian Murphy and Liam Neeson to make their cameo appearances. Obviously, the only one that I felt like we were missing was the Keith Ledger cameo from Joker. And that made complete sense because, you know, he's, you know, he's dead and, you know, you really can't do much with the character whose actor is dead having him being replaced was probably a bad bad thing to do and i'm glad they didn't do that and i'm glad they kind of left the joker off in the side to pay respect to heath ledger and his performance in that movie they kind of leave him for with his um with his own performance up there probably the best uh the best person in this entire cast was i think jim gordon because he was stuck in Gotham alone and, you know, to handle a lot of things on his own. And he definitely went through a lot in this movie as well. Um, I do believe that his wife left him in this movie. I can't remember if she, I think she did leave him and he was left to take care of, I think, some parts of his family and also, of course, to be running, you know, the Gotham police force. Christopher Nolan, you know, he he's burnt out at this point, but he gave us his best in this movie and I thought that it was great. Anne Hathaway was also a good addition to the cast as well. I thought that she brought in a lot to the role as well. You know, the movie definitely was dark and the movie was definitely brutal. So I'm going to give this movie an 8.5 out of 10. I think that the final scene of this movie was gorgeous. I loved it. It was a great ending to the entire trilogy. It left everything in a closed book. And that was something that I think was important because I don't, at this point, Christopher Nolan wasn't going to return to do any more Batman movies or any DC movies for that matter. So guys, let me know in the comments what you thought of the movie. Do you think it was great? Do you think it's bad? I know there's a lot of different opinions out there about this movie. So comment, in the, comment below and let me know why you liked it or why you didn't like it. Also, leave a like this video if you can. That'd be great. Also, guys, it'd be grand if you subscribe to this page. To check out some of our other reviews on this page, including other Batman reviews that I have so far. This has been Joel from Real Talk, guys. Go watch the movies.